What's up everybody, let's talk about seventh chords. Oh yeah. So this video is for those electronic music producers who are maybe not amazing keyboard players or amazing pianists, but who do understand how basic chords work. But maybe you're at that level where you've started to mess around with chords and it's starting to work okay, but you start to feel like maybe you're somewhat limited, like you're kind of painting with only primary colors, like you'd maybe want a bit more nuance. And sometimes when you hear more mature music, you think, why can't I sound like that? Well, with the help of seventh chords, you can. All you need in your average chord progression is to just drop in one seventh chord and suddenly everything sounds a lot more three-dimensional and rich. And now when you look up piano tutorials in the piano YouTube world, things get very complicated very quickly and they have like several different names for all of the different seventh chords. But I'm going to offer you a different approach today, something that is foolproof and super simple, right? Let's just do a quick recap of where we came from in terms of music theory. If you followed my foundations course and nothing of this should surprise you, but basically we remember that all of the keys on the keyboard are essentially the same. They're just grouped into octaves. So, and then back to the first one. This is all the notes within one octave. And those are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 12 notes. That's too many, that's too complicated. So we're gonna limit our selection by creating something called a scale. And a scale is just a sort of a formula for selecting which notes are in or out of our song for today. And the most common formula for that is where you take any root note and you construct a major scale over it. So you do something like, you add two semitones, you add two semitones, you add only one semitone, you add two semitones, two semitones, two semitones, and one semitone. That creates that very familiar do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do. Super familiar shape, and you can construct it over any notes. For the beginner learner, sometimes it's easier to start it only over the C, so that you get a combination of all the white keys. But you can create that musical shape starting from somewhere else. For example, starting from G, you're gonna go. And funnily enough, that includes one of the black notes. So everything that we can do in the C scale, we can also do in the G scale. But we just start counting from a different place. Let's use the C scale for today. In the C scale, there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven notes before we get back to one. That means that we can construct seven chords within this scale. The one chord, the two chord, the three chord, the four chord, the five chord, the six chord, and the seven chord. And we go back to the one up here at the octave. And this one's simply called one because it's a triad built on the first degree of the scale. This is called the five because it's a triad built over the fifth degree of the scale, sixth, and fourth. We call this a one, five, six, four chord progression. And it is quite bright, upbeat, and cheesy, and has been used in a million songs. But in electronic music, you might go for something more moody, and you might start, for example, on the six, and then you might go down to the four, and then you might go down to the two, and then you might hold it for a bit. And then you go back to the six, back to the four, back to the two. And now you're composing music, right? You find an emotional story that resonates with you, and you just keep cycling those chords over and over, changing the timbres and the textures of the elements playing over them. Easy peasy. But the way that I teach you how to make chords is you take a root note, and then you skip one of the degrees of the scale, and then you keep the next note in, you skip another degree of the scale, and you keep the next note in. And that's a triad. And that's super valid, you can get so far with that. And so today what I'm gonna teach you to do is I'm gonna teach you to skip another degree of the scale and add on what's called the seventh. This is now a seventh chord. Notice how this sounds quite simple and straightforward. And this sounds jazzy suddenly, especially when we start inverting the chord, like moving some of the notes around, for example. Let's move that one over there, and let's move that one over there. And so we get this. And then on the left hand, it's good to play the bass so that people understand where the tonal center is. Ooh, beautiful. So the idea is that you can take your chord in whatever position that you want, and then from the root note, you can play the notes that's inside the scale just to its left. And that little bit of tension is gonna give a beautiful color. However, this is sometimes even still a little bit too complicated if you're not a pianist, if you don't have the habit of sitting down at a piano. So what's an even easier way to think about it? Well, let's say you're gonna play the one 
right? So the C major, boom. Now, on the right hand, instead of playing C major, play the chord that is two degrees above it. So the third. Now, suddenly you have a beautiful seventh chord when you combine all these notes. And that chord on the right can be inverted however you like. So now, boom, you're playing a beautiful seventh chord. And you're even doing something that pianists often recommend, which is not to duplicate notes too much. So you're not playing the root notes in the right hand. You're already playing it down here in the bass, so no need to play it up here again. You can for a thicker sound, but it feels more open if you don't. And so creating a seventh chord is as easy as saying, okay, I'm going to play the three over the one, playing the four over the two, playing the five over the three, playing the six over the four, playing the seven over the five, playing the one over the six, and playing the two over the seven. And look at the chord name for this. This is a B minor seven flat five, which sounds really freaking complicated, but no, it's just the chord two degrees higher played over a root note two degrees lower. Forget about those names. The moment names add more confusion than that they help, just forget about the names, no one cares. For example, a few months ago, I did a video on Fred again, and what he did was he played the five over the three, like this, which I think is a beautiful chord. Like, let's invert it a bit. Mmm, in uh, Delilah, pull me out of this, he played that. And now let me play you a song that I don't know if you're going to recognize or not, but I'm going to play it in its boring version without any interesting chords, and then I'm going to add some interest to the chords. Two, three, four. Two, three, four. Two, three, four. Two, three, four. Doesn't sound... I mean, it sounds fine, right? But it doesn't exactly sound rich. Let me replace that chord, that C chord, with a C7 chord. I'm going to play it like this, probably. Right? And see how much smoother it sounds suddenly. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Two, three, four. Two, three, four. Let me do that again. So, sixth degree. And then simple chords are nice next to it, because not every chord has to be complex. If you just do one nice complex chord, you're going to be fine. And now, this song, the actual song, does, the, does another trick that I really love, which is it takes this chord, this is a third degree of the scale, and it does something weird with it. It turns the minor into the major, it plays the major shape of that. It's one of my favorite tricks. Shout out to Constantin for teaching me this, by the way. Whenever I play piano, I always do shout outs to Constantin. <laughs> Check him out. So instead of the three, you play the three major. And so what this does is it creates this. Three, four. Two, three, four. Two, three, four. Two, three, four. I've been seeing all, I've been seeing your soul. Tell me things that I've wanted to know. Tell me things that you've done I've been feeling old I've been feeling cold You're the heat that I've known They say you are my son And so that was seventh chords. So just build up your chord progressions as you usually would, but in between these bright primary colors, add in one nuanced watercolor, which is the seventh chord. And so as a small reminder, this is how you construct it. You play a note in the left hand and then you make the chord in the right hand that is built on the note that's two degrees higher. My name is Oscar. Like the video and subscribe if you found this helpful. Leave a comment to show me some love. And until next time, stay producing, be good to each other and take care. Bye-bye.